Alright, now we're going to take a deeper look into what's going on. This story, Don Lemon is driving away his fiance Tim with Tim with tantrums in wake of CNN firing sources. So, if you didn't know, Don Lemon just was fired for dealing his dealings on some way or shape or form. They found it justified. And now that he's fired, he obviously has to find different employment with different people. And as he's going away, they're just like mocking him. Because you get a lot of people didn't agree with him. But understand, he lived a lifestyle. And part of living that lifestyle as a sin before God, that's what opens you up to having many things happen. And I mean, obviously, I hope he got his act together. But obviously, he's married to another man. So he couldn't have. Let's talk about the character analysis. First Corinthians chapter six, verse nine. And it goes as follows, starting at the sixth. But brother, go off to the law with brother, and that before the unbelievers, now therefore there is utterly a fault among you, because ye go to the law one with another. Why do ye not rather take wrong? Why do ye not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Nay, ye do wrong and defraud in that your brethren. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, or nor adulterers, idolaters. Adulterers, adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. So, right there. You guys, you got to turn from mammon. People want what's in the world rather than to search God out. Because when you get what's in the world, you do what you want. That's why they say do what thou wilt. That's why there's a separate satanic religion for that type of behavior. And when you take that on, you're in deathly danger. Every place you go, you could die at any moment. Because you're moving with a wicked spirit that wants to kill you. Known as Satan. Right there, we read that a couple times. Now, his whole persona is effeminacy. He married another man and stuff. As I just read, that is a sin. Now, we're going to get deeper into what's going on with him. Starting at Psalms 106. All right, let's go. 29th verse. Thus they provoked him to anger with their inventions, and the plague break in upon them. Then stood up Phineas and executed judgment, and so the plague was stayed, and that was counted unto him for righteousness unto all generations forevermore. They angered him also at the waters of strife, so that it went ill with Moses for their sakes, because they provoked his spirit, so that he spake unadvisedly with his lips. They did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them, but were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. So right there, God sends you to handle certain business. Instead of handling business, these guys went and made friends with the enemy and started doing the same practices they did. But <laughs> crazy thing, you started doing what he sent you to destroy them for, which means now you're going to die with them. You can't go with the enemy and partake in the rituals and think that you're going to You can't be a part of the world and a part of God's kingdom, too. Like you can't be out there hustling, slanging, shooting. And then want to come inside and then talk against them, but still pop out now and then to go hustle. No, you got to separate yourself and speak the truth. That's the only way God can work through you. And as I told you, when you're mingled among the heathens and you learn their works instead of reproving it, now you're headed to a terrible ending because God doesn't want you to be friends of the world. He wants you to be understood of his word and what it means. Let's get a little deeper because uh, it's crazy, yo. This is going on, Don Lemon. You, we know who this guy is. His character, everything. Proverbs chapter 16. Start at 25th. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Right there. Perfectly set. God sets it up perfectly. That's how you know he wants you to read things. You know if you're a person handling business. This is it right there. People that do what they want, that do anything but his work, are going to die. And he tells you you're going to die. In the Bible, he chooses when you live and die. It's not, oh, this cause, a situation. No, God chooses. He can, he can make you live through the craziest things. I can attest to that. But I can tell you, if you're doing wrong things, you are in trouble of death. Right there. He that laboreth, laboreth for himself, for his mouth craveth it of him. 
An ungodly man diggeth up evil, and in his lips there is as a burning fire. A froward man soweth strife, and as a whisper separateth chief friends. A violent man enticeth his neighbor and leadeth him into the way that is not good. He shutteth his eyes to devise froward things, moving his lips, he bringeth evil to pass. The hoary head is a crown of glory, if it be found in the way of righteousness. Right there, there's people that are trying to wear a crown and be a king, but really be an evil king. Have evil intentions. He still allows them to get the crown, but the thing is, what are you going to do with it? He looks at your actions. You're condemning yourself before you start your rulership. You must be in will with God to do his will on the earth in order for you to receive of the blessings and promises. People complain, but you're not doing what God tells you to do. You can't get mad at him. Say, oh, you're the reason. He's going to show you you're the reason. And you're continually doing it. And you're going to be scared crying before he throws you in hell. You're going to be crying and screaming out. Right? When he throws you in hell, you're going to hear that auditory voice in the background. Ah! Then you're going to just disappear. Right there, do his will now. Search him out now. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 9. Okay, starting at the 6. Children's children are the crown of old men, and the glory of children are their fathers. Excellent speech becometh not a fool, much less do lying lips a prince. A gift is a precious stone in the eyes of him that hath it. Whithersoever it turneth, it prospereth. He that covereth a transgression seeketh love, but he that repeateth a matter separateth very friends. A reproof entereth more unto a wise man than an hundred stripes unto a fool. An evil man seeketh only rebellion, therefore a cruel messenger shall be sent against him. Let a bear robbed of her whelps meet a man, rather than a fool in his folly. Yo, that's crazy, yo. Do you get the wordplay? First off, let's start what he's telling you right now. He's telling you right now, if you're going to do stuff wickedly around other people and deceive people, you're going to lose friends. You're going, People are going to stop wanting to be around you. How is that false? And people are like, yo, this person's a liar. This person, people won't want to be around you. They're going to be like, I need to move. Like, I can't be around that person. That's a fact. Okay. And a hundred stripes into a fool. <laughs> a wise man. Okay. If you're wise and someone tells you something and you know it's godly. Yeah, you shouldn't do that. The law of God. A wise man's going to listen. A fool's going to argue why they should do it. That right there, that's that's so fat. A fool's going to try and figure a way around it. Like, I know that way makes sense, but I want to do it this way. Always. A fool is never going to listen. They're always going to try and tell you. Even if you're experienced. Even if you know. Even if you read. Just like me reading this book. They're going to look for any way to try and say, that's not true. That's not true. Instead of having read it themselves and said, no, brother, look here to scripture and proving me wrong by scripture so I can go, oh, because I'll be like, oh, I didn't read that there. I didn't see that there. See, you know what I mean? There's a difference. That's how you can tell who's smart and who's is foolish, because when you give them wise knowledge, they never use it or they make an excuse not to use it. Or when you have experience, they step over you like I got it. Like that's a fool straight off by scripture. That is a fool. And they're going to always do that until they turn to God. Without God, you have no knowledge. Your wisdom of this world is nothing. We read that yesterday. You're going to be tricked and Satan's going to use it to kill you. Straight up kill you with it. Going to make you think you got everything. Then he's going to kill you because you're not seeking God. Because God's wisdom is beyond understanding. He leads us through faith. What did I say earlier today? I said it's the substance of what's believed and not seen. I read that. Today, yo, people, yo, Numbers chapter 6, yo, this is the realest book ever. Starting at the second, speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, when either man or woman shall separate themselves to vow a vow, a Nazarite, to separate themselves unto the Lord, he shall separate himself from wine and strong drink and shall drink no vinegar of wine or vinegar of strong drink. Neither shall the drink any liquor of grapes nor eat moist grapes or dry. All the days of his separation shall he eat nothing that is made of the vine tree, from the kernels even to the husk. All the days of the vow of his separation there shall no razor come upon his head, until the days he be fulfilled. And he, and the which he separateth himself unto the Lord, he shall be holy, and shall let the locks of his hair of his head grow. All the days that he separated himself unto the Lord, he shall come at no dead body. 
he shall not make himself unclean for his father or nor for his mother for his brother for his sister when they die because of the consecration of this god is upon his head all the days of his separation he is holy unto the lord right there it's a person dedicating herself to the lord even if we're going through what we're going through we're making everything known to anyone we encounter that we trust in the lord thy god so my thing is there's certain things he was fasting so he wasn't cutting his hair, wasn't doing stuff. Right there, people try to use that and say, oh, I got to have really long hair. No, that's not what it means. He's telling you he gave up everything around him, his humanly natures and desire to serve God. And that's what he was doing with it. You guys will grow your hair out not doing anything godly. They'll have long locks just running around doing the same things they do with short hair. So what is it that you're dedicating your life to when you got long hair letting it flow saying you're doing this for God, saying this is what God wants? You're not doing anything of God. None of his works. So what are you getting in the end? You're just going to be hung up in hell by your hair and beaten by a demon. Yo, we're going to get there because these dudes don't listen. They don't read. They really don't. And it's sad because when you know what actually is going to happen to you for everything you've done when you're not listening, you turn right now. Let's go to Numbers chapter 6. Let's go a little deeper. Again, we read down to the Hus area. Now we're going to go further. Okay, and we're starting at the verse where we left off. Now we're at the fifth verse down there. I'm reading a little bit ahead. All the days of the vow of his separation, there shall no razor come upon his head until the days he be fulfilled. And he that which he is separated himself from to the Lord, he shall be holy and shall let the locks of his hair of his head grow. All the days that he separated himself unto the Lord, he shall come at no dead he dead body. He shall not make himself unclean for his father, nor for his mother, for his brother, for his sister, when they die, because the consecration of his God is upon his head. All the days of his separation, the whole... He is holy unto the Lord. And if any man die very suddenly by him, and he hath defiled the head of his consecration, then he shall say, shave his head in the day of his cleansing. Up on the seventh day shall he shave it. Right there. God gives us as believers, always has, the right to stand up and defend in his name. So you guys think, oh, we're going to just attack these Christ believers. They ain't going to do nothing. Not so. Not these ones. These were his direct people. They were... They were laying them down, these evil men. They were laying them down, sending them to hell because they took on the, this evil spirit. He lets us fight and defend. He's not going to let us just be wrecked by them. And he just said, okay, grow your hair out. You, you catch a body, shave your head because you're fighting for God. Understand they were getting attacked because they were standing in the name of God, fighting for Christ because they believed in Christ. They were being attacked. He was letting them wipe these dudes out getting drop body drop now we're at the crux zechariah chapter 7 starting at the first and it came to pass in the fourth year of king darius that the word of the lord came unto zechariah in the fourth day of the ninth month even in cheslu when they had sent unto the house of god scherzer and regamelite and their men to pray before the lord and to speak unto the priests which were in the house of the lord of hosts and to the prophets saying should i weep in the fifth month separating myself as I have done these so many years. Then came the word of the Lord of hosts unto me, saying, Speak unto all the people of the land and to the priests, saying, When ye fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh month, even those seventy years, did ye at all fast unto me, even to me? And when did eat, and when ye did drink, and not ye eat for yourselves and drink for yourselves, guys? What did I say before reading this? Growing your hair and stuff fasting. Didn't I say that? Not even reading this yet. Right here, I'm going to tell you. When it's talking about not you eat or drink for yourselves, you do everything in the name of God, not in the name of self. Dude, say I'm going to fast for myself. I'm going to stop doing that sin for myself. I'm going to stop doing that for myself. I'm going to stop doing this for myself. No, you stop doing it to worship Christ. You do it to give time to Christ. Taking away from time of self and you give it to Christ. Right here. That's how you spend your time around these things, fasting. You shouldn't fast because I want to get skinny. No, you fast because you're trying to give honor and glory to God. And then you're reading the Bible right there. Fasting for any other reason is useless. It doesn't make sense. It's giving you a, a mental thing saying, oh, this, this. No, it's a false sense. Your only reason of fasting is to Christ. You're supposed to give honor to God right here. That's the only reason you should be fasting. Not for, because I want to lose weight. Nothing like that. 
It's for God because it's a devoting thing to God that they use to show honor. But guys are doing it different now. And that's what's dangerous. You got to do these things for God. Straight up in this story, look at it. It's very clear cut and dry here, man. There's a lot going on in these artists' life. And that's the thing. They don't speak up about everything happening. But we got to keep in mind what we're trying to do with ourselves and what we're trying to take our lives. Because they're trying to sway us one way. And it's important because the youth are in danger by these people. Look at the stories that I'm reading. These youth read this. And what happens in their conscience? They're attacking the conscience of the youth. You don't see that yet. They're reading the story, but they're getting something totally different out of it. Making them think it's a lifestyle they can do. Making them think it's okay. No, Don Lemon is not right. Don Lemon is wrong. Don Lemon has been a wrong person. That's why they joke on him and make fun of him out the door when he got fired. Because he has done nothing worthy to be entertained. And he speaks down on black people like he has some authority to do something. Because he's like, oh, they don't believe in my agenda. Just because I don't believe in what you should do, I'm not attacking you for it, sir. You're an African-American man that has been attacking African-Americans since you sat on the platform. Always. Because you have no respect for yourself. Look at the lifestyle. Right on time. Look at this guy's lifestyle. I can't make this up. You look at his lifestyle. You look at the things he's doing. Look at what he's saying to people. It's not right. And you're trying to teach children that act like you got some sort of power. Sir, you got to change your life up off the rip. You're living a very torn life and it is a wicked sin to live how you're living. That's why God is not with you when this stuff is happening. You got to turn to Jesus Christ and change your lifestyle because you're living a wicked life right now in public, glorifying it. You got to stop. You got to get away from there. You know, right on time. God bless Don Lemon and help change this man. He's crazy.